The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good morning, everybody out there. Day is day two of the Top Solid 2021 product rollout. Uh, today we're going to start with uh, Top Solid Design new features. Excuse me. So we're going to just give it a minute here. I see some more people logging in and we'll get fired up here. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay, so let's uh, let's start right here. We're going to start. All right, all right, let me uh, let me start with today's agenda. Uh, so today is broken into four sessions. This is session one. In session one, we are going to be reviewing what's new in sketching, in the shape tools, in free shape, and in surfaces. Uh, at the end, we'll finish with a little question and answer session. I'm going to do my best to keep this within about an hour or so. Uh, session two begins at 11 a.m., uh, session three, I believe, at 1 p.m., and session four at 3 p.m. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, as, uh, as in all webinars past, you guys have a question area uh, in your interface, so if you have any questions, by all means, please type them in, and we'll do our best to get them answered. So to begin with, Inside of Sketch, we have a couple of changes to dialogues. Okay. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Will there be a recording? Yes, every single one of these are being recorded. They will be uh, published next week after the seminar is all complete. So uh, we'll send out an email to everybody so that you can gain access to those videos. Okay, so the dialog boxes, let's just, I'm going to move this off the screen here for a minute, and let's just go ahead and hop into some sketching. So I will start here, and let's start by just creating an empty sketch here, and let's talk about some of the dialog box changes. So line, rectangle, circle, a lot of them that had uh, pulled on menu options for the different types of rectangles, we've replaced the pulled on menu options in the dialogues with icons, okay? Um, if we look forward a little bit uh, to line, um, we've added a new relative coordinates option as well to the uh, 2D sketch contour command, 2D sketch line command, 3D sketch contour, 3D sketch line. And what does that mean? So if I'm drawing a line, and let's just say I'm out here and I pick a point, we now have a endpoint mode down here that is either relative to your zero or relative to the previous point. So this is a toggle option here. So if I'm relative to my zero and I type five, five, right? Oh, pardon me, I was relative to the re previous point there. So it's relative here, went up five over five. If I go again and I'm relative to my zero now and I go five, five, it's now 5.5 five relative to the zero point. So it can be a handy way of describing locations on the fly. All right, let's go on to the next one. So next, we've made an improvement to the offset command in the 2D sketch. And let me minimize that. So here we have a, a, a spline and we have an ellipse. So if we're in a 2D sketch here, it used to be that you could not use the offset command on these types of profiles within the solving level of the sketch, okay? But if you notice, now you can. The reason you can is because of a new option that's available and you have to turn on this option in order to get this to function, okay? That option is located within the options of the sketch you're in. So you go down here to uh, 2D sketch. Actually, let me undo these offsets really quick. We'll come down here to options. And then down here at the bottom in advanced options, you have solving with profiles. If I uncheck that and I try to offset, then this is what you get like you used to get in previous versions. You would have to go to the solving level, or pardon me, the uh, 
operation level sketch offset in order to get it done. So again, the improvement is that you can indeed offset complex curves now in the solving level. You just have to make sure that that's checked within your options. Uh, can that sketch be, or can that option be turned on by default? I believe once it's on, it's on. So yeah, turn it on one time and it should be on forever. Okie dokie, let's keep on moving here. Alrighty. All right, so let's go look at tangency. So we made a, a little improvement to the tangency constraint command. So when we go and add a tangency constraint, we want to be tangent between this and this, right? So that we could always do, of course. But the goal here is we want to be tangent between this curve and this curve at this specific point. So the improvement now is that you can actually do this. So what you do is you select the first curve. You then come down, click under tangency point here, choose the specific point you want to use, and then you select the other curve that you want to be tangent with. Then it creates it tangent at that specific point. Okay? So again, the trick here is by default, if you just select the two curves, it's going to act like it always is act. It's just going to be tangent based on a proximity. So we select the curve, you come to tangent point, you select your point, and then you can be tangent at a specified point. Cool. All right, let's keep on going. All right, next one, positioning a spatial sketch. So for those of you using 3D sketches, the 3D sketch pretty much always would position its zero at the absolute zero frame, okay? So if I go here and I just start a sketch, you can see it's active on that frame and we can draw anywhere around those frames planes or from or relative to those points. The improvement now is this, let's cancel that. We go into tools options. Give it a sec, because options pop up. And you have to be in the sketch section here. You can turn off auto position. If you turn off auto position when creating the sketch, here's what happens. So again, I'm in my 3D sketch. I go to activate. Now it's going to ask you what the support plane is. Now I could choose a support plane of an existing frame, or I could even just choose a planar face. I could say, you know what, I want to be there. Notice it's projecting the zero point out to there, but maybe we want the origin point to just be at this top edge right there. Perfect. And now if I click OK, my origin of the sketch now is going to be there. And if I hit control space bar, that's how you change planes in the 3D sketch, you're drawing relative to that point in those three planes. Cool. Alrighty. Next improvement in sketching is something called a seedling on profile. Okay. So seedling on profile, this is part of multiple improvements, in fact. Uh, there's a surfacing command that we will show you here shortly that is that works in conjunction with the seedling on profile. There's also a multiple intersection command that we use that works with the seedling on profile. So let's start by understanding what a seedling on profile is. We're going to start by deleting the seedling operations. I'm going to delete my curves, and we're just going to draw everything on the fly. So let's go to 3D sketch. Let's go to uh, edge copy. Sure, I don't care where my zero is for this one. Uh, we want to be path between two edges, right? So I'm going to select there, go in that direction, stop here. Do the same thing down here, stop up at that curve. So now we have our guide curves. Now, the reason I'm doing this is just to showcase that these are indeed multiple segments, different curves. Okay. Now we can go to the operations and we can come down to seedling on profile. You have three main options. Okay, this first option is at random. Maybe there's a, maybe you just want random points generated along a curve, but you want a specified number of points. You have length, 
this maintains an exact distance between the points along said curve, okay? And then you have projected distance on axis. This is maintaining a, a length between points relative to an axis, okay? So if we take a look at this one and I select my profile, sure, going from the top down, why not? I'm gonna say 20 points. Now we have 20 points. If I go here, we have 20 points, okay? And off we go. So now we have our seedling created. And the whole idea behind that seedling is to drive something else. Uh, what else could you drive with the seedling? Let's take a look. We have a nice little sample here. So here we have a staircase, okay? And I wanna create my um, supports of the railings going up the staircase. So this is a great opportunity to create a seedling, right? So let's go ahead and go here. Let's go to seedling on profile. Again, zero is fine. Here, I'm gonna select my curve. I'm going up that direction. I, instead of using or typing in a number, I have a parameter already created called n bar that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna do the same thing on this curve, make sure I'm going the same direction, and we're done. After that, I can go up and include my bar. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it in. I'm gonna make sure I'm zoomed up and I select the right points here. Point A to point B, perfect. Now I wanna make kind of a, a repetition, right? But it's not a standard repetition, in fact, it's a serialization. So here, this is my original. It auto detected the seedlings and I can click okay. And now we have our banisters created perfectly and uniformly up and along those curves, that staircase and those seedlings. So this is just a use example for you, but you can probably imagine multiple ways to use this. Alrighty, let's look at the final sketch improvement here. Multiple intersections. So multiple intersections, it's a, it's a cool command. Um, it's going to allow us to create, well, multiple intersections, but we're going to drive that by a seedling profile. So now we're gonna kind of combine everything together because maybe what we wanna do is we wanna to try to create a new surface for this set of surfaces that are kind of ugly, right? So to do that, let's start by entering into our 3D sketch. Let's start by grabbing, gamma, that edge there to this edge. Again, we're just going through similar samples of what we just did to create the original seedling, okay? Done. Now let's go make a seedling. So we're gonna start our sketch. This could all be inside of one sketch, by the way. There's really no point not to be. I'm just using as different sketches in case I wanna call them up as different operation types or for different operation types, I should say. So now we have our 20 points, okay? From here now, we're gonna to go to the new command, multiple intersections. So with multiple intersections, how does it work? First thing, are we doing it to the shape or to a set of faces? In this case, I'm gonna do it to a set of faces. Now, I could use any of my selection filters to make selection faster here, but as there's four faces, I'm just gonna pick my four faces. From here, I need two guide curves, right? So I'm gonna choose this guide curve and this guide curve. Notice the vectors, I want them flown in the same direction. And then here you can have it create the points on the fly or set of pre-existing points. And this is the seedlings. One, two, now you have all the sections between all of those faces, okay? Now, some of the cool options you have with this, you have the ability to play around with extensions. For example, I can extend at the beginning via tangency, via curvature, via exact, extend at the end. 
then this can be used to create a new perfect surface down the road. So this is an example of multiple intersections. Are there any questions at this point on any of these new sketch commands that we just talked about? A seedling is just a fancy is it just a fancy name. Right, so the question is, what is a seedling? I noticed they exist in the 714 2D sketch. So a seedling is just a fancy name for a repetition of points. Okay, and it's just a repetition of points along a curve in this case. All right, so let's keep on going. So next we're going to go into shapes. We have a few improvements here on shapes. I'm going to go to the new one. On this, oh, there's one more question here. Hold on a sec. Uh, on the staircase example, does it rotate the object? I don't believe it does. Maybe it does. I'd have to go and make a square sample and look. I'll make sure to come back and answer that after the the webinar. I'll I'll make a sample and see. I want to say it. I want. I honestly, I don't know. So. I'll look into it after the webinar and I'll answer that afterwards. Okay, so chamfer. Let's go just look at a simple sample here. So one of the bigger improvements on chamfers is a new variable chamfer command. Okay, it exists right here. You can grab it right underneath the standard chamfer command. It needs a reference face. So I can select my reference face. You can work on angle mode, which is then going to be a distance followed by an angle. Okay, so let's go here. So if I go in here and I set this to be two, for example, you can double click, sorry. You have a 45 degree chamfer that is starting as 10 millimeters here to two millimeters here. If I turn off angle mode, you then have the ability to play with different sizes. So I can say two by 10, right? And I can say 10 by two. And you can see now exactly how the variable chamfer is working. Do variable chamfers break the chamfering operation in CAM? Uh, I, I would imagine, well, break it. I don't know if that can count as a breaking. I don't know that you could use a chamfer tool on this with just the chamfer command. You could use swarf with a chamfer tool on this type of chamfer, but the chamfer command is a two and a half axis command. So if the tool doesn't match the chamfer, then I don't see how it could work. Okay, so there's your variable chamfers. All right, angle clearance. A couple samples of this. This is actually a really nice command. Um, so here we have a plate with some kind of beam sticking out of it, right? And you can see we've cleared out the corners. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm gonna go into my assembly here, do an in-place edit. I'm gonna delete the last angle clearance. So we have the part here. I'm gonna turn it off just so we can see better. And we wanna clear out these edges. Now in the past, in order to do this, you'd have to draw a clearance in. Now in 715, you have a new command called angle clearances. It works very similar to chamfer and fillet in the fact that you just select an edge to apply to, and then you have the ability to apply angle clearances. If you want to rotate the side these are on, you just click on the images to do so. Okay? You have the ability to control sizes and radiuses and whatnot. If you want a corner clearance like that, go crazy. But at the end of the day, you can come in here and quickly define exactly what you're after. Validate. We turn the editing context back on. You can now see that everything is perfect. So. That is angle clearances. Let's see what's next here. Let 
me just update my thing here. Ah, so here. Let's see. Go here, perfect. So the drilling group command. So anytime you're doing drillings on, a, on points, for example, using drilling group, it is now supporting manufacturing features. So in last year's version, if you were using manufacturing features inside a top solid cam, drilling groups were ignored. In 2015, or pardon me, 715, 2021's version, drilling groups are now automatically considered for manufacturing features. Okay, uh, we'll talk about manufacturing features in CAM updates uh, later on this week. Alrighty, here we go. And let's see what's next. Don't think, ah, yes, fitting. So lastly, and if we go here, let's talk about this sample, right? So we have a fitting surface. So fitting surface, again, if we hide the sketch, let's just go hide the sketch elements. Maybe this is how your model came in. It's got a bunch of garbage faces in here, okay? And they're not really garbage. These are all tangent faces, but for machining, maybe they're not ideal, okay? So you have a new surfacing command called a fitting. So if we go to the right place, there we go. And we go to fitting. We can select our profiles. Okay. And we don't need clothes, sorry. Let's turn them on. And there you go. And it just, think of it like auto loft because that's really what it's doing. It's auto lofting between all of those intersection profiles that we created, and it's creating one simple, perfect surface that we can then use to replace all the other faces by, or if you're in top solid cam, just machine that face directly. So the idea behind a fitting surface, we're using the auto intersections, we're using the seedlings to drive it, to try to make uniform sections that are clean, they're G1 continuous sections. Do you notice? Okay. How do I know that? Because A, when you hover over them, they're just single profiles. Okay. Plus, I also know that when we make the sections, we're smoothing them for you automatically. Okay. And that's that. So that's the improvements for shape commands. The U and V directions driven by the profiles. So um, I'm going to go with yes, but let's show you. So if we go here, and we go to 3D sketch and we go to isoparametrics, right? So if you notice, that's now perfect that way. And if we go to V, that's now perfect that way. And yes, they're exactly driven by the sketches. <laughs> Yes, it's a awesome, awesome tool. Uh, this, for those of you that, again, are CAM users, and if you use sweeping a lot, and if you use reference surfaces to sweep and then project tool path, this should make it ridiculously simple to get some really, really awesome tool path. Okay? Perfect. Any other questions on shape improvements? No? Okay. So let's move on. All right. So we have a small improvement on free shape. So here we have some part, right? It's an imported part. You can see my history tree. There's, there's no history here at all. Um, so if we go to free shape, we can go and launch into this, convert it, why not? Uh, 
and we can go ahead and extract drillings, okay? And then I believe we can hit extended search. And you see here with extended search on, when I click on something, it's finding all the same features that have the same altitudes across the part. It used to be this only worked with features that are on the same face. Okay, so that's the improvement in reshape for you. Alrighty. So if we look at surfacing, okay, I talked about fitting already. So we're gonna just skip over that one for right now and let's go look at tangent surface. Okay, so we'll start with a simple sample here. Okay, and let's go to surfacing and let's go find tangent surface. Uh, where are we at? Okay, so that's the face. These are the edges. And hold on. Oh, right, sorry. The improvement is there's a wizard to this. So if you notice, there's a blue arrow here. Let's maybe make those a little bit bigger. So now we can go to here. And now in this next step, it's auto filling in the corners. Like so. Okay. So where this can be handy is if you're using this tangent surface command to make extensions on a part like this, why not? Okay. So if we look here, we see all of these tangent faces that we've made, but maybe when we're making them, it was leaving gaps in the corners that you had to treat before. And now the software can automatically treat them so that your tangent extensions for your toolpath are more automated. How is tangent surface different from extension surface? So extension surface is extending. You'd have to copy all these faces first and then you can extend them. Tangent surface works directly on a solid model to create a tangent surface tangent relative to faces. Make sense? Cool. Alrighty. So that uh, we actually did we did pretty good time here. That completes the first session today. Uh, so we went we went through the major improvements on sketch, shape, free shape, surfacing. So now we're at uh, general questions and answers. Does anyone have any specific questions regarding sketches, shapes, free shape, surfaces that I can answer for you? I know there was one answer or one question that I got to do some research on, so I'll look at I'll look into that just as soon as we're done with today's uh, or this morning's presentation, and I'll shoot answers off on that. Otherwise, since I see no other questions, have a good uh, morning, and hopefully we'll see you guys on the next session that starts at 11 a.m. Central Time. Talk to you soon.